Hello and welcome back to The Grim Reader. So I'm going to try and do a recognition themed video. And it's going to be very casual. We won't make it too, too uh, much like a, a lecture, but you know, it is going to get into the weeds a little bit with this tome. So, I, I, but all I'm going to do is I have my, so as you can see, um, I have my flags. And if, there was a little bit of a discussion about how um, some people don't like this cover, Sarah doesn't like this cover, and she likes the Dolkai archive cover better, which is, has a picture of Gaddis on it and a uh, sort of Toreador bullfighting poster in the background, which is very nice. And what's funny about this cover, I mean, the German professor notices that the colors, if you think of this as more gold, it's it's the, the, the German flag. <laughs> Which is an interesting, I don't know, I mean, I kind of like it though. I think it sort of works. I mean, it's fine. And I like the font, the kind of serafi font that they've gone with for this edition. And so what I'm going to be doing is um, going through some of my pa favorite passages, so to speak. You know, this is a tried and true thing that I do with my students, you know, just to get discussion flowing, is to have people pick out their favorite passages and, and talk a little bit why they like them. And actually, it's kind of it's good because it means, you know, they have to do something <laughs> and they have to sort of think a little bit about why they picked it and, and you can sort of gauge where their thinking is. So my first passage that I'm going to talk about is pretty early on. Excuse me while I open my little Trader Joe's soda, lemon elderflower soda. So if we were actually doing recognition drinking, we would have to have something with lavender in it because there's a lot of lavender in here. It's one of the motifs of this book is an overwhelming smell of lavender. And you bet if Kathy went and ordered some lavender essential oils because, and they're actually even got a lavender plant yesterday at, at the Trader Joe's. And we have to be careful because apparently it is somewhat toxic to the kitties. So, but anyway, cheers. So my passage, takes place fairly early on. I mean, after the initial interaction with Luke, the family. So the the main protagonist, Wyatt, and his uh, wife, Esther, are having an interaction in this scene. And they're, you know, it's a very difficult marriage, basically because he's extremely, he's an impossible person, basically. He's incoherent, he's obsessed, he's introverted, he's, He's just so much in his own world um, that he can't really communicate, let alone have a healthy relationship with his wife. And so that's the backdrop to the scene. And so starting on 92, I'm setting it up. What I'm going to actually read out to you is uh, Esther coming home from somewhere and thinking about Rilke. Rainer Maria Rilke is one of the intertexts of this big text, is the poet and man, Rainer Maria Rilke. And it's sort of even interesting in the beginning, this first part where it says, and I'll just read out a little bit, just give you a flavor of the text or the style, uh, the beginning here. It was dark afternoon when Esther came in, bearing in the forefront of her mind fragments of a conversation she had left a little earlier, in parentheses, on Rilke. Not Rilke's poetry, but Rilke the man, who refused to be psychoanalyzed for fear of purging his genius." End quotes. But over this and through the rest of her mind skated an image far more familiar, plunging and surfacing, escaping under the applied hand of her memory, reappearing when she turned elsewhere, echoing among faces and lanterns and the prows of boats. Maybe we're fished for, dot, dot, dot an image whose apparition she waited even now. Though it was dark in the studio, she opened the door and looked in there. Then she took off her coat, turned the radio on, and sat down, oblivious to the soprano singing Nel massimo dolore, sempre con fe sincera la mia preghiera. Excuse my Italian, I'm assuming. <laughs> um, and so that's the setup. So even there, I think it's interesting that the the kind of the dichotomy or juxtaposition of Rilke's poetry, which plays a role, specifically the first duono elegy later on, but also Rilke the man, the character of the man, and the kind of uh, analogy being drawn between 
this genius poet and her husband, in her mind at least, and, and the whole, um, I'm not quite sure, I haven't quite unraveled the whole refusing to be psychoanalyzed for fear of purging his genius. I mean, it does kind of remind me of Wyatt, but not in terms of being psychoanalyzed, just in being termed of not wanting to talk to people, I guess, not wanting to share, being very self-enclosed. And so then um, she she does come across him and they have a little dialogue where they were both in the same museum uh, looking at a new Picasso picture that we could go look up on the, I'm sure we can find a copy of Night Fishing in the Antipes. And so she saw him there and she was with other people and she says, why didn't you speak to us? Speak to who? You? Were you there? I was there with a friend. You could have spoken to us, Wyatt. You didn't have to pretend that. Uh, and so he didn't talk to them. He kind of didn't acknowledge her existence. And he says, who? I didn't see them. I didn't see you, I mean. You looked right at us. I'd already said, there's my husband. We were near the door and you were bobbing. <laughs> Listen, you went right past us going out. Look, I didn't see you. Listen, that painting. I was looking at the painting. Do you see what this was like, Esther? Seeing it? I saw it. And then this is the actual reason why I put the flag, the stuff coming up now. So this is Wyatt, our main protagonist speaking. Yes, but when I saw it, it was one of those moments of reality, of near recognition of reality. I'd been, dot, 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 I've been worn out in this piece of work. And when I finished it, I was free, free all of a sudden out in the world. In the street, everything was unfamiliar. Everything and everyone I saw was unreal. I felt like I was going to lose my balance out there. This feeling was getting all knotted up inside me, and I went in there just to stop for a minute. And then I saw this thing. When I saw it, all of a sudden, everything was freed into one recognition, really freed into reality that we never see. You never see it. You don't see it in paintings because most of the time you can't see beyond a painting. Most paintings, the instant you see them, they become familiar, and then it's too late. Listen, do you see what I mean? As Don said about Picasso, she commenced, that's why people can't keep looking at Picasso and expect to get anything out of his paintings. And people, no wonder so many people laugh at him. You can't see them any time, just any time, because you can't see freely very often, hardly ever, maybe seven times in a life. Um... I think that's the end of the stuff I was getting at. So this idea of just this, the notion of really seeing, what does it mean to see something? Uh, and this idea of um, everything being unreal. So for, for Wyatt, the normal reality is, is often unreal for him, or he can't comprehend it, he can't take it in. Um, everything everyone I saw was unreal, real, and he, and he fe feels like he'll lose his balance. And so he stops into the museum almost as if it were a church, which is very fits with this no, no, novel that has a lot of religion in it or church. Um, so he stops into the museum to calm himself, to, to balance himself, to ground himself. Um, and, and then he has this moment of recognition. When I saw it, all of a sudden, everything was freed into one recognition, really freed into reality that we never see. So basically the idea that uh, for him, it's, it's, it's a little silly, but the, the, the actual reality, the reality behind the platonic images that are every day um, is, is, is not accessible. And only in these moments, these sort of few special moments of recognition, and for him, one of these moments happened when he saw the painting. And um, so I guess I obviously like the passage because it connects to the theme of recognition. What does it mean to, to recognize? And um, I remember when I first read the passage, it's almost like it's been a while. I, I had the sense that the painting was seeing him, sort of, that there was a kind of looking back, a, a recognition on the point, part of the painting. Um, but I'm not quite sure if I get that right now. It does remind me of my feelings when I go to a museum, which are sort of similar in a sense. I mean, not that I'm 
that disconnected from reality. But what happens to me, and I wonder if you have the same experience, when you go to an art museum and you walk into the room, it's as if the paintings are almost like people. I mean, to a certain extent, and what, by, what I mean by that is there's always certain paintings that capture your attention. And, and for me, it's sort of like, I'm looking at all the other ones, but there's this one looking back at me. <laughs> and, and I mean, not sort of flirting or anything, but, but uh, there's one that I really sort of, I'm waiting to get to. And then, and then there's this moment of you get to the one that's, that you really are interested in and you're like, ah, this is the one. This is the one that I have a relationship with. So that's what I mean by paintings like people. And for some reason, when I, I think when I first read this quote, that's what I was thinking of, this moment of, almost like a mutual moment of recognition between, between you and the artwork. Uh, and it's just, maybe it's just me. That, that's why I'm sort of po posting this here. It's like, I'm pos positing this idea that you get the sense from some works of art that they, you know, almost, you know, that not only do you recognize them, but that, that they or the artists recognize you back somehow. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but that's the whole point. This is hard, this is hard stuff. This is hard to make sense of. But it's also very satisfying in a certain sense because it is about um, life contemplated beyond the everyday in, in, in the works of art and great works of art. Genius also, you know, people who have a special talent like Rilke, like Picasso, and perhaps like Al, Al, Al Wyatt, and definitely Gaddis too. So yeah, that's I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't want this to get too long and it's already 11 minutes that I've babbled away here. So I think I will just kind of post this and, you know, label it Rec recognitions video. And um, yeah, maybe what I should really do is work on thinking about thoughts that I have about recognizing Rilke in the recognitions. So so this the theme of his poetry and, and the man, which kind of it's funny because Rilke has come up in the Ali Smith novel and this. So it's like, it's a theme of this year. It's, it's the year of work in a, in a certain sense. Anyway, I will talk to you very soon. Thank you all for watching. Hope you're all doing well. And I'll be posting my weekly wrap up today or, or, or recorded very soon too. So bye-bye.